Hi, my name is Karen Carroll and I am coming to you uh, from CertifiedRN.com. And our goal today is to analyze ABGs and this will give you one free contact hour. Um, and while we're at home sheltering in place, it's a good time to brush up on our ABG analysis. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing we want to do is go over the objectives for this um, lecture. And the first one is to determine the PF ratio using the PAO2 and the FIO2. And that's going to help us determine whether a patient has, is hypoxic or not. Uh, we are going to identify the four primary acid-base imbalances. We're going to analyze seven sample ABGs. You're going to do this on your own, and then we're going to come back and go over them going to identify compensation on an ABG, and then we're going to discuss mixed acid-base imbalances. So if you remember, uh, an arterial blood gas is, it's coming from the artery, so it's oxygenated blood. And when we look at that ABG, we are going to look at the acid-base balance, um, including assessment of ventilation, and then we are also going to look at oxygenation status. Those are the two primary goals every time we look at an ABG. It gives us a very detailed assessment of a patient's uh, respiratory status, but also their um, acid-base balance. Hi, so let's go ahead and talk about how the body uh, buffers and keeps the uh, pH in a very narrow range of 7.35 to 7.45. Our first acid-base balance buffering system is the bicarb -carb carbonic acid equation. So if you look at this equation, you can see that the byproducts of metabolism, which are CO2 and, and water, are on one side of the equation. Then you have carbonic acid in the middle, and then you have um, uh, hydrogen ion and bicarbonate, okay? And so basically at all times your body is moving this equation back and forth to keep the pH in that really strict range. Um, if the a normal uh, blood pH is a result of a bicarbonate to carbon dioxide ratio of 20 to 1. So if that ratio is less than 20 to 1, you're acidotic. If it's greater than 21, you're um, alkalotic. So the second buffer happens in minutes and this is the respiratory buffer. This comes from our lungs. Um, and so one of the things that I want you to always remember is that CO2 is considered an acid. So anytime someone's CO2 elevates, then they are be going to become more um, acidotic. So uh, the lungs buffer by either holding on to CO2 or exhaling CO2. So that's our second line buffer and it only takes minutes to occur. And so this is probably one of our fastest buffers that we could actually control. Uh, we generally don't, but you could. So if there's a high level of carbonic acid, this will tr trigger faster, deeper respirations as the body attempts to eliminate the acid by breathing out CO2. So remember the lungs blow off CO2. CO2 is an acid. The next one is our metabolic buffer, and uh, this is our kidneys. It's a slower buffer. It takes hours to sometimes days to fully work. And um, just remember that when we think of a base, we think of the bicarbonate. And um, the kidneys help to control bicarb, and they can actually produce bicarb if we need more buffer. Um, they also can excrete hydrogen ion, which is an acid in the urine, and they can reabsorb bicarb. And so the kidneys, um, uh, they will also excrete other metabolic acids that can um, also lead to an acidosis. So when we talk about acid-base balance, we need to know some values. The first one is pH. And remember the overall pH, uh, the body wants to be about 7.40 plus or minus 0.05. So very, very tight control. So you're acidemic or acid, you have acidemia if your pH is less than 7.35 or your alkalemia if your pH is greater than 7.45. So it's a very tight control. The respiratory parameter is PaO2. 
um, and uh, I'm sorry, um, is PCO2, okay, which is our respiratory parameter. And the normal respiratory parameter needs to be between 35 and 45. So that's kind of easy to remember because notice the pH is 35 to 45 too. So that's kind of helps us. So a normal PCO2 is 35 to 45. If you have less than 35 PCO2, then you are alkalotic and you are hyperventilating. If you have greater than 45, you are hypoventilating and you have a respiratory acidosis. Okay, so that is our respiratory parameter. And finally, bicarb, which is our metabolic parameter. So if our bicarb, once again, it has a very tight control, it's really just 22 to 26. Uh, and if you're under 22, you're acidotic. And if you're over 26, you're alkalotic, and that would be a metabolic alkalosis. So those are our three parameters we're going to spend the most time looking at. So if you look at this little chart that I put together, we have the acid-base balance on the left. We have possible causes, um, and then we have a sample ABG. Then we talk about what would compensate for that. So if you have a respiratory acidosis, the metabolic system is going to help you compensate for that. And then we have a sample ABG for that. So these are the only prime, these are the primary acid base imbalances on the left. We have a respiratory acidosis, we have a respiratory alkalosis, we have a metabolic acidosis, and a metabolic alkalosis. Those are just the only four primary acid base imbalances. So we're going to talk about each one of these as we go through analysis. But when I think about a respiratory acidosis, you have someone who is not removing enough CO2 via their lungs. And the person I like to think about, a common patient would be like the over sedated patient. And as they retain CO2, they're gonna have a decrease in their pH. Then the um, next one is respiratory alkalosis. And this one, the classic patient that you will see is a patient who is hypoxic. So let's say they're having difficulty breathing, they come in short of breath, their oxygenation levels are low, you put an O2 sat probe on them and it's reading like, um, uh, like 89, let's say. And so you're about to put oxygen on them, but you draw an ABG and what you'll find is because they're hypoxic, they are over breathing. They're hoping to improve their oxygenation problem by increasing respirations. Now that's not really gonna help, but we're gonna see it reflected on the blood gas. And you will see that they have actually blown off CO2 and they have a respiratory alkalosis with a pH that is high. The next one is metabolic acidosis. And the patient I like to think about here is the diabetic ketoacidosis patient. This is a perfect example. So in this situation, their bicarb is low because uh, they've been buffering all this acid in their body. So they have a low bicarb and they have a low acidotic pH. And then uh, metabolic alkalosis. And this one I think of as diuretic therapy because when we give a lot of diuretic ther therapy for, to people in the hospital, they tend to in, uh, in, uh, result in an increase in their bicarb levels. And so they tend to get a metabolic al alkalosis. So you'll see an elevated C uh, bio bicarb and an elevated pH. So, here are the four steps to analyzing any ABG. And if you always follow these steps, you won't miss things. You'll always be sure that you catch everything. So it always starts with the assessment of your oxygenation status. Then we go on to look for the primary acid base imbalance. Then we look for compensation. And then finally, we look to see if there are any um, mixed acid base imbalances, okay? So we're gonna take each step one by one. Before we do that, I just wanna give you some values so that you remember the values. 
So just remember when you're looking at your um, ABG, pH 7.40, um, PCO2 35 to 45, excuse me, bicarb 22 to 26, and some labs may have a little different range, so know your lab's range. PaO2 of 80 to 100, oxygen saturation greater than um, 95, so really 96 or over is considered normal. And then base excess is another value that they'll give you. It's a very helpful value. Um, it's a uh, non-respiratory reflection of acid-base imbalance, and it should run between minus 2 and plus 2. Step number one, to assess oxygenation. So you want to ask yourself some questions. Is there hypoxemia present? Is the PaO2 normal for the amount of oxygen the patient is receiving or the amount of FiO2 that they are on? That is called the PF ratio, and we will go over that so you understand that better. But before we do that, let's just think a little bit about arterial uh, oxygen content. So how much oxygen is in the blood? And I want you to remember that um, uh, the arterial oxygen content is made up of really how saturated is, is the blood on the hemoglobin molecule, okay? And so that's our O2 sat. That's how most of our oxygen is gonna get to the tissues. Um, and that's really great because we have an O2 sat monitor we can look at that at all times. But the partial, partial pressure of oxygen, or the PaO2, is the amount of oxygen that is dissolved in blood, okay? And this normal value is 80 to 100. When we're looking at our ABG, this is the value we wanna look at. So when you're thinking about a patient's oxygenation status, I want you to always remember you need to have uh, you need to have a normal hemoglobin level so that you will have enough uh, O2 carrying capacity and you need to have a good cardiac output so that that blood can actually get to the tissues. And you need to have a normal PF ratio. That relationship between the PaO2, which is the amount of blood diffused in the, in the, in the plasma, um, and uh, how much the patient's actually breathing. And we really want that value to be around 400, about 380 to 400 is considered normal. Here's a couple of examples of uh, calculating a PF ratio. So the first one is, a, let's say you did a blood gas on me today, and uh, my PaO2 came back at 90. Uh, and I'm breathing room air, which is 21%, so 0.21. Uh, so you're going to take that 90 and you're going to divide one, uh, 0.21 into the 90. And that's going to give you a ratio of uh, 428, which is greater than 400, which would be considered a normal PF ratio. Uh, let's take an example of a patient you might be caring for who's um, on their uh, blood gas, their PaO2 comes back at uh, 85 but they're on 40%. They're on five liters nasal prongs, which is approximately about 40%. Uh, just so that you know, when you're doing PF ratio, it's really more accurate when um, the patient is on a ventilator on a PEEP of five. That's kind of when the PF ratio is the most accurate in determining um, hypoxemia. But it can be a great guesstimation for even a patient who is on nasal prongs or other kinds of oxygenation um, that they might have. So uh, you can use it in this situation. So we have an 85, we divide it by 0.4 and we get 212. So that's fairly low. And just to give you sort of an, an idea of how low that is, in mild ARDS, we think of a PF ratio that's less than 300, but greater than 200, and that would be considered mild ARDS. So that kind of gives you an example of um, what a PF ratio of around 200 would be. So um, the next step is we're gonna determine if there's a primary acid-base imbalance and see if there's one that's present. Now, most people wanna go straight for the pH, but I say hold off on that and look at your two parameters first and then look at your pH. 
it's going to make your life a little easier. So are any of the parameters abnormal? So when I say which parameters, I'm talking about CO2 or bicarb. And so that's the first question you're going to ask yourself. Are any of the parameters abnormal? The next question is, uh, is the pH abnormal? And I want you to consider 7.40 as the only normal pH when you're doing acid base imbalance, okay? Just because that's going to help guide you. And then with whatever parameter agrees with the pH, that's the primary problem. So if the P, uh, PCO2 is causing the abnormal pH, then the pH, the problem is from the lungs, okay? So a patient is acidotic if the CO2 is high and the pH is low, and a patient is alkalotic if the CO2 is low and the pH is high. And so notice we always think of CO2 as an acid. So I'm going to put an A next to my um, CO2 if it falls into the acid range. So that's why you see the little A by the CO2. And if it falls into the alkalotic range, which means it's low under 35, then I'm going to put a base or a B by it. So when I think of um, uh, alkalosis, I want you to think of base. So that's a base. Then I'm going to look at the other parameter, and the other parameter is bicarb. And if it's causing the abnormal, abnormal pH, then you have a metabolic problem. So if the patient is alkalotic, if the bicarb is high and the pH is high, notice I put a B by the high bicarb. And that's going to remind me when I do my, my acid base uh, analysis. And you're going to see how we do this. If the bicarb is low, then that means the patient's in an acidotic state and the pH will be low. So that's going to help us determine the primary problem. So let's do a couple of these so you can see how that works. Okay, so here's example number one. We have a 28-year-old male with a history of PTS. He reports not being able to catch his breath or catch my breath. He is hyperventilating and appears in acute distress. So until we see his ABG, we really can't say he's hyperventilating. Um, you have to have a CO2 that is low to be considered hyperventilating. So let's see if he really is hyperventilating. So if you look at his blood gas here, let's go ahead and go through it. His oxygenation is fine. That's in normal range. And his CO2 is low, and that's base. So he is hyperventilating. So this is a great example of a patient hyperventilating. Maybe he's anxious. Um, and his bicarb is normal. Now we look at his pH, and it's alkalotic. So we line up the two Bs, and we have a respiratory alkalosis. So that's a great example of how to analyze an ABG. Okay, let's look at one more example. And so in this example, we have an 80-year-old male with a history of mild COPD. He experiences dyspnea and chest pain at home and is admitted to the hospital. His initial ABG result is on 50% FiO2. So if we look at these parameters, first we look at his O2 and we notice it's 68 and he's on 50%. So when you do his PF ratio, his um, PF ratio is only 136, so that's not really very good. Um, the next parameter we wanna look at is CO2. And you can see the CO2 is 65 and that is high. So that's acid. So we put an A next to that parameter. And we look at his bicarb and his bicarb is normal. So we put an N next to that parameter. Now we finally get to look at the pH and the pH is in the acid range. Uh, and so we're gonna put an A next to that. So we line up the two A's and it, so the parameter is CO2. So we have a respiratory acidosis with hypoxemia. So that's a great example of respiratory acidosis and hypoxemia.
The next thing we want to talk about, the next step is to look for compensation. The body attempts to keep the pH within normal range by using either the lungs or the respiratory system or the kidneys or the metabolic mechanisms to compensate for the opposite system's trouble. So if the lungs are in trouble, the kidneys help. If the kidneys are in trouble, the lungs will help. Alveolar ventilation happens within minutes, so respiratory is fast, but the kidneys are slow and they require sometimes up to two days to fully compensate and the body never overcompensates. So here's step three, determine if compensation is occurring. And here's the question you have to ask yourself. Is the pH in normal range, but the CO2 and the bicarb are both abnormal? So both at parameters are out of range. So that's really important. So when the pH is normal, but the CO2 and the bicarb are abnormal, compensation is occurring. The primary imbalance will always correlate with the pH like we've learned. The body never overcompensates, so you want to look at a normal pH um, and see if it is more acid or more base. And so this is where we always want to use a pH of 7.40 as the only normal pH. Because really what the body's trying to do is get back into range, but it's never going to overcompensate. So we want to just look for whether it's a little to the side of 7.440 or from what side it's on. Okay, Is it on the acid side or is it on the base side? Uh, partial compensation can occur and this is where the parameters are abnormal but the pH has not gone into normal range. That's what it means to have partial compensation and we'll be able to show you a couple examples of that. So let's do a P, let's do this uh, acid base and see if we can figure out if there's compensation. So just looking at this, we're going to start with oxygenation. And we're going to see that the PaO2 is 65 and they're on room air. So when I take 65 and divide it by 0.21, I get 309. So that's a little bit low, isn't it? And notice the oxygen saturation is low also. So your patient has hypoxemia. The next thing is I'm going to look at my two parameters. So look at my CO2 is an acid. The CO2 is high. Too much acid in the body. So CO2 is high. The bicarb is high, which means I have a base, lots of base. So a B goes by the bicarb. But look at my pH. It's in normal range, but it's leaning towards acid, isn't it? So that's an A for acid. So I'm always going to define my primary problem. I'm always going to line up my two acids here. And so this is a respiratory acidosis with complete compensation because the pH is in normal range. This is a really great example of a patient like a COPD -er who is just living their normal life. This is what their pH might look like or this is what their, their um, um, blood gas might look like um, when they're in their normal daily activities of going to the market and that kind of thing. So this is an ABG of a patient with COPD without exacerbation. The primary, the final, final step is step four, and this is to look for mixed acid-base imbalances, where there's two primary imbalances. And I'm only going to go over one potential possibility for this. Um, generally, in clinical practice, it's not one of those things nurses spend a lot of time on, but I am going to give you an example of this. And so what, what you will see is when both parameters agree with the pH, there's a mixed acid-base imbalance. And a really good example of this might be uh, a patient who has a, a full cardiac arrest. So let's just look at one of these. So in this situation, if we look at the, um, the CO2, the CO2 is high, it's 60, so it's acid. The bicarb is low. It's 
going to be acid also and look at how low the pH is that's a very very low pH and so they all both parameters agree with the acidosis so this is a mixed acid base imbalance of respiratory and metabolic acidosis this is typical like of a postcode patient maybe that first ABG that you get but we sure are oxygenating um, them uh, at least we're giving our effort to oxygenate them here with 100% FiO2 so you think you might be good but look our O2 sat is still low and our PaO2 is still low um, here also so if you go back to the initial uh, slide you can see it here again too is that I've lined up where whatever the uh, compensation is in the um, let's see one two three fourth column and an example of a compensated ABG for you so that's just to kind of complete the picture I love this saying by Lady Macbeth in Shakespeare's play uh, screw your courage to the sticking place and you will not fail so we are going to go on and do some practice AVGs so this is where you are going to want to pause your tape go to the next slide and I want you to work through these ABGs I want you to use the four steps stretch yourself and see how you do with this and then we're going to come back together and we're going to go over each one so that you feel like you can do this and you can go to work and do this tomorrow so let's go ahead and you go ahead and pause the tape and work on these okay we're back let's go over these ABGs together so this is our number one so here's our ABG how do we approach it step one oxygenation What's the PaO2? It's 59. Look at the O2 set. Doesn't look too good. They're on 40%. PF ratio is 148. So we have hypoxemia, probably pretty severe hypoxemia going on there. Now we look at our two parameters. Respiratory parameters 29 and the bicarb um, is 24. So what do you think is going on there? Let's see. So uh, a CO2 of 29 is base. And a bicarb of 24 is normal okay uh, then what's our pH our pH is alkalotic and so we put a base by that so we have a respiratory alkalosis with hypoxemia this is a classic presentation of a patient in early respiratory failure this is how they will present um, they are trying to improve their oxygenation by breathing more it's not going to help because we as ICU nurses and uh, progressive care nurses know that the only way to really improve oxygenation is to give more oxygen or to add PEEP those are our two main ways we improve oxygenation so uh, this is a great example this is number one so respiratory alkalosis with hypoxia here's number two so we look at our oxygenation it's uh, it's normal so and they're on room air so we've got no problems with oxygenation here the co2 is normal okay but the bicarb is in the base range okay look at the ph the ph is base also so the bases line up and so we have a metabolic alkalosis number three well how's our oxygenation well let's see our PO2 is uh, is uh, 240 and they're on 50 percent that gives us a high PF ratio of 480 so if this patient's getting 50 percent oxygen you could probably take some oxygen off this patient okay now let's look at the pH we got well we don't look at the pH first do we look at our parameters first so look at our CO2 and our bicarb and look what we have our co2 is base we've blown off a whole bunch of uh, co2 and our bicarb is acid and when we look at our ph we can see it's acid so this is a metabolic acidosis a kind of a severe one too do you notice that co2 of 20 can you imagine to blow all that co2 off this patient's probably got what we call ku smalls respirations deep rapid respirations they're blowing off all that acid trying to compensate 
but not even getting close because the pH is so acidotic. So this is an example of um, maybe a diabetic ketoacidosis that you've got a little too many oxygen, a little too much oxygen on. Here's number four. Uh, let's go ahead and go over number four. So our um, O2 is 77 and O2 sat is 95. So on their own room air, so that's normal. Um, and you can see it's a near normal PF ratio. Uh, now look at your two parameters. Uh, you can see the bicarb is in the base range, so it's pretty high, and that makes it base. And then the um, CO2 is in the acid range, so this patient's holding on to some CO2 at their lungs. But look at the pH, it's normal range, but it's leaning towards alkalosis. Um, and so we put a B by that. So now what we could do with this is we line up our Bs. So we have a metabolic alkalosis but the pH is in normal range, the CO2 is compensating. You see how the lungs are compensating there? And so this is a completely compensated um, acid base picture. So this is a metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation and it's complete compensation. Okay, let's look at this one. PO2 is 80. Um, O2 sat's all right, and they're on room air, so that's okay. Uh, and then if we look at our two parameters, we have um, bicarb is a base, because it's high here, and the CO2 is normal. And so the pH uh, is also a base, so this is a metabolic alkalosis, okay? So we have here oxygenation status first. Uh, we have a PaO2 of 60 um, and the O2 sat of 88, so that's too low. And they're on 60%, okay? So this is gonna give them a pretty low PF ratio of 100. So that would be considered severe um, hypoxemia. So that's pretty, pretty low. Now let's look at our two parameters and see if they're out of whack we can see that our CO2 is too high, so that's acid, and our bicarb is high, which is base. So now we look at our pH, and our pH is low, which is acid. So we always line up the two that are together. So this is a respiratory acidosis, but notice that the bicarb is out of whack too. It's actually high. It's trying to compensate. So this is a bicarb that is attempting to compensate. And this is a great example of a patient who had, like a COPD patient with acute exacerbation. This is how they might come in. Their bicarb's probably always high, and as long as their CO2 doesn't go too high, they stay in normal range, but the CO2 went really high, and so now they're out of range. So this is a really good example of a respiratory acidosis with partial compensation. Here we have a PaO2 of 68, and they're on 40%, and so that's a low PF ratio of 170. And uh, we have our CO2 is acid, and our bicarb is base. But notice the pH is in normal range, so there must be compensation going on here. But it is below 7.4, so we're gonna label it as acid. So we line up our two A's and we have a respiratory acidosis with compensation because the uh, pH is in normal range. So this is a good example of a COPD patient without exacerbation who maybe lives with oxygen. Hi, let's do a sample question and see how you do. So we have a patient who has heart failure, um, develops sudden dyspnea and expectorates pink frothy sputum. Breast sounds are equal with diffuse crackles, which always means you've got kind of a wet lung whenever you hear crackles. So the patient's on six liters of nasal prongs and there is your blood gas for you. So if you wanna analyze that blood gas, you can look at your oxygenation first and look at your O2, it's 64, so it's low. And when you're on six liters, you're on about 40, 40, 44%. So if you wanted to go ahead and try that and divide the 64 by 0.4 or 0.44, if you think it's 
um, that'll give you your um, uh, PF ratio. Uh, and we'll see the answer to that in a moment. But let's look at our two parameters. The CO2 is just a little bit low, okay? Um, so that would be base. The bicarb is what? A little bit low, that would be acid. And the pH is um, uh, a little more towards the alkalotic side. So this is a respiratory alkalosis um, with hypoxemia. So if we look at that uh, PF ratio and that guesstimation on that is going to be about 145. So that's definitely hypoxemia. And the primary acid base imbalance here is a respiratory alkalosis. So this is very classic in early acute respiratory failure to see respiratory alkalosis with hypoxemia. Primary problem is the hypoxemia. Once you fix that, the, the alkalosis will go away. Okay, let's go ahead and do another um, question here. This ABG sample obtained while a patient's on a 90% partial non-rebreather reveals the following. Okay, so anybody on a non-rebreather mask is like the sickest patient in the hospital because they're going to probably need intubating. Either you're going to get better or they're going to need intubating, so you got to watch them. But let's go ahead and look at this and see what we have. So um, our O2 is 85, but they're on 90%, so that's not going to be very good. So that is probably uh, severe hypoxemia. Um, and you can do an estimated um, PF ratio by taking the 85 and dividing it by 0.9, and you're going to find a very low PF ratio. Um, their CO2 is 78, which is high, which is acid, and the bicarb is 27, which is normal. So the acid lines up with the pH, so the, it's respiratory acidosis because the pH is acidotic. So that gives us a, a respiratory acidosis with severe hypoxemia. Very good. So you did indeed screw your courage to the sticking place and you will not fail. So uh, you'll see there's kind of some fun little uh, things there, references to Hamilton and Beauty and the Beast. And, uh, it's interesting, you can find uh, Shakespeare quoted all over modern television and the movies. So I do like this statement by Lady Macbeth. So remember, screw your courage to the sticking place and you will not fail. Uh, you can go and receive your um, uh, CEUs after the tape is over. And once again, go to work and analyze some AGs. See you later.